Hey, my name is Connor, and welcome to Crypto Empire, where we dominate the crypto market. Right now, the cryptocurrency market, as well as the global financial markets overall, are in an extremely pessimistic state. The stock market did just post its worst month since 2008, and we had the Fed raising interest rates. However, with all of this being said, Bitcoin is yet to form any macro lower lows on the higher time frames. So in this video, we'll be analyzing the data as well as hopping into the charts to go over a strategy that you can use to navigate this pessimistic and fearful time in the cryptocurrency markets. If that does interest you, be sure to stick with me until the very end of this video. Without further ado, let's get right into the content and let the gains be with you. So to start things off, let's take a look at the overall crypto market. Right now, we do have a market cap of $1.76 trillion, down 3.37% on the day. It has been a red day across the board for both stocks and crypto. Bitcoin is trading for $38,659. ETH is trading at around $2,800 and BNB below $400. All the majors are down on the day. Now, if we take a look at the crypto fear and greed index, right now we are back into extreme fear everybody is fearful people are panic selling not financial advice but i wouldn't suggest to panic sell right like i always say here never act from your emotions you always want to play from a position of strength when you act from your emotions that is not at all playing from a position of strength but nonetheless looking at the fear and greed index we are now at a 23 so a very fearful time in the market now let's go over some news i have good news and i have bad news what do you say we start things off with the good news? And that is the fact that a second nation state has now adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. We can go ahead and take a look at this article right here and read that the Central African Republic has become the second ever country to adopt Bitcoin as a national currency following El Salvador's adoption of the cryptocurrency last year. So this is major news. Let's go ahead and read further a little bit more information about this. So, the Central African Republic government says a bill to adopt Bitcoin has passed unanimously by the country's parliament. The office of the Central African Republic president claimed that the move would improve the conditions of Central African citizens and distinguish the CAR as one of the world's boldest and most visionary countries. I do agree with this. Here in the U.S., we have inflation running rampant. Of course, the Fed did go crazy the past two years and print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. They actually printed about 80% of the current dollars in existence. And same thing goes with central banks around the world. They just printed and printed and printed money. And now we are suffering the consequences of that with, of course, rampant inflation. Now, the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, also known as, to me, the CP lie because they do change those numbers around to make things seem better than they actually are and saying that inflation in the u.s is above eight percent right now realistically we're looking 20 to 30 percent if that right probably more who knows anyway the central african republic as well as a lot of african nations they face inflation of hundreds of percent right their central banks their economies are distraught and they just go ahead and print and print and print money. So this is a huge move, the fact that the Central African Republic has went ahead and adopted Bitcoin as legal tender, as its national currency. This is the second domino to fall, of course, after El Salvador. And I only do expect more nation states to follow suit. So that in and of itself is extremely bullish for Bitcoin and for crypto. However, the current moment in time, things are not looking amazing in the market. Let's go ahead and move on. And we can read right here about the current financial market that the Nasdaq posts the worst month since 2008 and the Dow plunges 900 points. Market sell off does continue. So tech stocks have taken an absolute beating over the past week as earning reports did actually come in. Tech stocks were way overvalued, way inflated. Of course, we just spoke about how the Fed printed trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. A lot of that did flow, of course, into the stock market and, of course, the tech sector. Now, Bitcoin is highly correlated to tech stocks. So, of course, with the NASDAQ, with the Dow, the S&P taking huge hits, Bitcoin, of course, is not going to necessarily be able to fight against the current, right? Even with all the bullish news happening in the cryptocurrency sector such as this. So, stocks down bad. Bitcoin is highly correlated to stocks. So, it's not looking amazing for the global financial markets at the current moment in time. Very fearful right now. 
We can also look at the monthly return percentage chart for Bitcoin and see that for April, we are down 15.24%. Now looking at all the other months of April since 2013, Bitcoin has usually performed very well or if it did have a red month, it was very minor. The highest red month was down 3.46%. So right now we're down 15.24% the month of April in 2022. This is breaking records right now for Bitcoin. This was not necessarily expected going into April. Myself, as well as a lot of other people out there, were expecting a green month. We did not get that. No worries, of course. Nobody has that crystal ball to predict what does happen. All we can do is adapt and position ourselves to actually be protected and, of course, make profit on what does actually go ahead and happen next. Looking at May, right, looking at the historical returns for May, usually it's a very bullish month, right? We do have some red ones in here, such as last year, the market did crash 35% in the month of May, going from 64K down to, you know, the, the low 30s, high 20s. So we'll see what does happen coming up in the month of May. Nonetheless, the current moment in time, things are very uncertain. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts and go over what is happening with Bitcoin. So, of course, we are still in this massive ascending consolidation pattern. A lot of people are classifying this as a bear flag and saying that we're going to drop to the low 20s, high teens. I even hear some people saying 12K for Bitcoin. Personally speaking, I don't expect that to happen at all. Of course, we could see some kind of black swan, but even if we do see a black swan, I don't expect low teens, high teens, right? 20s maybe, but even that is a bit of a stretch. Where I am a buyer, where I am a huge buyer is down here in this demand zone from 32K to about $29,000. This was the macro low back in the summertime correction of 2021 over here. Price was not able to break below $28,750. The bulls held this line with force. And now if you guys were in the market during that period of time, the bears, just like they're saying right now, we're going to $12,000. They were saying the same exact thing over here. What did actually happen? This was a time of extreme fear, extreme pessimism in the market. Everybody was saying that the sky was falling, claiming chicken little. What happened? The market went ahead and it rallied around 135% from top to bottom. So this does go to show you, despite what the general sentiment is saying, Despite what your emotions are saying, the market is always right and the market will do what it does want to do. Personally speaking, during this entire consolidation period, I did not flip bearish once because I analyzed the whole picture. I look at the on-chain data. I look at how Bitcoin is moving on and off exchanges. I look at the holder ratios. I look at all this data and people, other than the start of the correction, people were not moving their Bitcoin on exchanges to actually sell it. Now, the same thing is happening right now. Right. Bitcoin on exchanges is at historical low levels, even with this quote unquote bear market that we're in. But if we look at all the previous bear market cycles, 2013, 2014, 2017, 2018, after the market peaked, people were moving their Bitcoin onto exchanges to liquidate it at rapid rates. That is not the case right now. The amount of holders is continuing to actually go up for Bitcoin. So like I've said many times, you cannot classify this as a bear market if we're looking at the metrics from previous bear markets. Now, on the daily, you can see we are forming a massive descending wedge inside of the overall consolidation pattern. And we are basically at the lower support trend line, as well as the same origin point of the move that we saw for the false breakout back in late March, early April. That was, of course, when Bitcoin went ahead and rallied from $38,000 up to about $48,000, right? This was actually a false breakout from the massive ascending triangle pattern. However, Bitcoin was not able to keep its momentum. This ascending triangle right here, Bitcoin was not able to continue its momentum. I was thinking, I was saying here in the channel as well that I, I was expecting to see $52,000 at least. The bulls cannot sustain the momentum to go ahead and push up to that supply level, right? We did get rejected over here at 48K. From there, it has been just down only really back down to the lower support and the origin point of that rally upwards. So this is a big demand level, support level. We'll see if support does hold. We are now going into the weekend. It is Friday right now and the trading volume is very low, right? So I wouldn't expect anything to happen over the weekend. We're gonna have to see how the markets do actually open up come Monday. But speaking of trading volume, I do want to point out to you one very interesting metric, at least I find it interesting, 
is the overall market volume that we have seen over the past few years. So of course the bull run started in early 2020. You can really classify it in March of 2020 when we had that black swan event. And then from there, Bitcoin rallied to new all time highs above $64,000. Now we can actually go ahead and look at the volume profile of that major bull run. And we can see that the trend was really upwards during that entire bull market, huge bull run we saw until we had that May crash last year in May of 2021. If you look at the volume profile, we had an ascending volume profile the entire time. Now, if we look at the volume profile from that May crash, it has been nothing but a descending volume profile. So what does this tell you? It tells you that there's not nearly the same level of market participants as well as big money actively involved in the market, right? In order for us to see any kind of crazy pumps, we need to see this type of ascending bullish volume again, and we just don't have that. All right, so until that does come back, and a lot of this is actually retail FOMO, right? Fear of missing out is huge in crypto. It's actually what causes the huge parabolic pumps that we see. For example, Elon Musk, Michael Saylor, they were buying Bitcoin, they were shilling Bitcoin around the $30,000 price levels. And of course, a lot of people who aren't necessarily sophisticated investors, don't have a lot of experience, they read the headlines, they see that Elon's buying $1.5 billion of Bitcoin. So all of a sudden, monkey see, monkey do, they all wanna buy Bitcoin because Elon did it. That is a huge reason of what caused a massive rally upwards did peak out at around $65,000. So until we see that kind of fear of missing out from the retail speculators, I'm not necessarily expecting any huge new all-time high market rallies. Keep that in mind. So what do you do going forward? Well, it's important, like I always say here, to always keep some of your portfolio in cash. Really, 20% is a good number to keep in cash in case we do actually start losing these support levels. And if we do come down and test this 30K level, right, like I said, I'm a buyer down here. So... Of course, I have some of my portfolio in cash. I am still heavily exposed to the market, not exiting all of my positions, but I am prepared in case we do get some kind of crazy buying opportunity because that's all it is. People get upset when they see the lower prices and prices crashing. All these are are opportunities. So you need to have your mindset in check. And if you see a red candle, a huge red candle breaking supports, just know that the macro situation, Bitcoin is extremely bullish over the longer term. And if we do see any kind of major crash, in my opinion, that is a major, major buying opportunity. If we break this level down here below $29,000, an even bigger opportunity for the longer term. Now, before we do go ahead and start wrapping things up, I do want to show you the dollar, the DXY chart because this is at a historical resistance level and it is now posing its first red candle in about a week, right? The dollar has been going parabolic. This is the daily chart. Right here, we did top out at the 103 level for the dollar, posting its first red candle right now at resistance. If we go to a weekly chart, I've showed this chart many times over the past few months here in videos, on live streams, etc. And I've talked to you guys about how the inverse correlation does exist between the dollar and, of course, Bitcoin, as well as stocks, right? When the dollar goes up, stocks and Bitcoin go down. When the dollar goes down, stocks and Bitcoin do actually go rally upwards. So every time we have been up at this level from 2016, as you can see, we have seen huge moves downwards, all right? Of course, most notably, March of 2020, the dollar peaked out right at the 102 level, started trending downwards and of course we saw the biggest bull run we've ever seen in cryptocurrency we're going to see here if the dollar can actually sustain this parabola this is a parabola right it's going straight up and as far as parabolas go they are always the most absurd the most violent upwards at the end of the parabola and looking at this weekly this past week for the dollar has been just nothing but up right so this could very well be the peak of the parabola we could possibly bounce around here above the 100 level for a few weeks but looking at this chart this is a very likely spot to start to see some kind of retracement for the dollar which would be extremely bullish for bitcoin for crypto for stocks etc right all risk on assets when people start moving their dollars back into risk on assets because right now this chart is showing you that people are moving their funds their dollars from risk on assets back into cash. When this starts to drop, all that means is that people are starting to sell their dollars back for things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrencies overall. 
So we have to keep a close eye on this chart to wrap things up. Like I said, keep some of your portfolio in cash in case we do see some kind of major dip here. It's very possible. Although looking at the charts, we are at some major support levels at the bottom of, of course, our descending wedge. We're at the apex of the wedge and the major support lines down here. So if we do break these lows, we do have support down here at around 36K. And then of course the major levels coming in at around 33, $32,000 down to around 29K. So in this video, we cover the overall macroeconomic situation playing out right now in the world and how it is affecting risk on assets such as Bitcoin and cryptocurrency overall. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you let me know by leaving a like. And if you are new to Crypto Empire and you are not already subscribed, go ahead right now and smash that subscribe button down below and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. And my name is Connor from Crypto Empire and I will see you in the next video.